first and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakhapadash. Double honors to the elders of Pasta GMS who do well. Salute you, brothers, for pushing this word. And truth and sincerity and strength, Pai Yahweh Shemal Shai. And Shalom to you, brothers and sisters, going to trust the spirit and Pai Yahweh Shemal Shai. Shalom to you, too, right? We are here to cross out the downfall of the wicked destructive kingdom from the Babylon the Great. Sodom and Gomorrah, Egypt, Rome, all those ancient empires brought up in the one controlled by Esau, Edom, the so called white man, the devil, and the father of Israel, right? And we are here to gather the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of the Negro Lights and those of Native America. Those are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites, according to the uh, King James Bible. And only the elect is going to turn back and repent and serve the Heavenly Father and the Son in truth and sincerity. Right? I got a uh I got an article I want to touch on. Uh look up the definition of uh seaport. Seaport? Yeah. Like uh you know what when ships come in and, and, and dock. I uh, this an article in uh in the news, right? Uh Israel at war and it says uh Elliot Port sees revenue drop. 80% 80, 80 due to the Houthis attack, right? So here it is, you got a port, which is six ports. It's six ports in uh, in uh, Israel, right? And this is just one of, the, one of the ports. And it's six of them in Israel, but it's three, uh, three main ones, okay? And this is one of them, even though it's small, right? But it says, the, uh, it says Elliot, uh, port sees revenues drop 80% due to the Houthis attack. Okay, so it says Israel's southern port has suffered badly since the beginning of the attack of the of Yemen. So that's what I wanted to uh, show. You know, you nigga like you know the name Mark, the elect out of y'all concerning what's going on over there in uh, Israel. So you got a port that uh, dropped 80%, you see, of what's coming in there, right? So that's one. So give me the definition of a uh, seaport. So there are no well, right here it says, uh, is a town or city with a harbor for seagoing ships. Right, and the seagoing ship bring the products in you know, for the people and for the government, right? So the society, so the government and society can function. So 80% of that revenue, you know, have dropped to where they can't even get uh, the ship in to function properly with the products that they get. Due to that seaport, 80% uh, down and due to the uh, Yemen attacks, you know, concerning this uh, war that's going on over there. Now, like I said, you got six, you got six ports, and you got three, three main ones, and this is one of them. Okay, even though it's small. Okay, so that's in the news concerning them Israelis over there, right? I got another one. Let's see what we got. It says. Uh, it, has a, it has a little bit more. Go ahead. It says, uh, I'll read it again. It says, a town or city with a harbor where ships stop to load and unload cargo. Yeah, see, that's what you want. So you see what you got? So that's what's going on over there concerning the seaports, right? Now, I'm showing you the article so you can go look at it yourself. You know, hold on, let me see. So you can go look at it yourself if you want to. But I would just read uh, the title mainly and some of the paragraph. So you got this, right? You got another one. This is another article. You got 40,000 40, Israeli companies have closed since October, okay? 40,000 have closed since October. Now, it says, uh, let me see. 
I'll like read some of it. I ain't gonna read all of it. It says, uh, some 40,000 Israeli companies have closed their doors since October, aim expectations that the number will rise to 60,000. So you got 40,000 clothes of businesses and they're saying it's going to rise to 60,000. Now I just wanted to get that out so y'all can see the conditions. Y'all can read the rest of that article. Right? Lord willing, y'all can see it. Right? So there you go. So you got, you got Elliott Seaport drop 80%. You got 40,000 businesses closed, and the expectation is for it to go up to 60,000. Now, on top of that, you got war going on, right? And then you got uh, you got this. This is uh, it says PTSD. PT, PTSD could cost Israeli econ economy $50 billion over the next five years study. I'm going to read some of it. It says, uh, the total cost to the economy was estimated, it said the total cost to the economy was estimated to be around 197 billion shekels which is comparable to the estimate budget increase for the defense ministry over the next five years. So here it is. You got this article. I read, the, I read some more of this. It said the new study published on Wednesday has found that the economic burden of PTSD on Israel could reach around 100, 197 billion shekels. Now in parentheses, it got equivalent to the American dollar, uh, 52, I mean, 53.2 billion, okay? Over the next five years. So, I stacked all that, you know what I'm saying, together to show you the condition. There's just some of it now. It ain't all of it. The condition of the people that say that they Jew, which they call themselves Jewish and Israeli, it's a difference. Jewish is a difference and Israeli is a difference. You need to do a Google search. It's a difference. Now, looking at them articles, and I, like I said, that's not all of them. Looking at them articles, you can see with just them three articles, it's a problem over there in the Far East with the people and the government over there in the Far East, in the Israelis occupying that land. It's a problem, okay? They not in, in a good case over there. Now you got, you got post-dramatic stress and that comes from war. And they come from having them constantly be in that war and they still at war. So if the citizens got post-dramatic stress do the war, they not functioning properly, man. The people that's walking around there is not functioning properly, man. So I just wanted to bring that out to y'all to show y'all the ones who own, who watch this channel, you know, through the spirit of y'all watching out shot, to show you the conditions that's that's taking place over there in the land of Israel over there. With those people don't belong there. The Negro Latinos and the Native Americans belong over there. Okay? That's our homeland. It ain't Africa neither. Okay? Jerusalem is the motherland of us all. Okay? That's the birth, that's the origin of us all, man. Okay? Now, I got my boy, you know, uh, you know, my boy, Scott Ritter, right? I got my boy, Scott Ritter, that I want to let him speak on something right now. Okay, and then we're gonna get some script. Matter of fact, get, get some, matter of fact, start off with Matthews, Matthews 24. Matter of fact, no, let's bring the script back. You know, Matthews 24, then I'm gonna get the Scott there. 
okay? See what my boy got to say, Sky Red. You know, the, 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 the fans is after him right now. You know, he hot. He hot right now. The fans is after him. He hot. You know? Talk. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, this is Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. Right. It says, And Yahweh Shai went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. Right. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, See ye not all these things? Question. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another mm -hmm. that shall not be thrown down. And as, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? Question. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Question. And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am a Mashiach, and shall deceive many. Yeah, because that's ha that, that happened back then and it's happening today, man. It's a lot of people that claim they got to understand these scriptures, which they don't, man. It's all over the world, man. People, man, you, you try to get understanding the Bible, man, it's so much. BS out there, man, it's ridiculous. They breaking down the script completely wrong, man. Okay? It's completely wrong. It's ridiculous, man. Okay? But that was the Lord warning, you know, the disciples and us back then, the ones that wake up to this truth on this side. That was a warning, man. And the ones who listen to what we're saying, that was a warning, man. Like, look, you're going to have a lot of people that call themselves people and as if they anointed by me, as if they one of my servants, and they ain't. You see? A lot of that's gonna spring up. So he was so he was telling you back then. And we telling you today. Man, it's a lot of people on that well, man, that break down the Bible completely wrong. Don't even know what they talking about, man. But they got a lot of followers, yeah. you know, and that's what make people cling to them. They look at the followers, they oh, they must be thinking right now, nah, you off. You see? Completely off, man. But that's the, what people uh, look at, the following. They don't look at the doctrine. And they look at the following and the influence that the person got. They ain't looking at, you know, the breakdown of the scriptures. They ain't looking at the words. They ain't going into the history. They ain't going deep into it like that, man. And then they get to the point to where the person that they listened to before then, they used to open up the Bible and read alone. They didn't get to the, they get to the point to where they don't even have the Bible out there. They just listen to what they say. Right. You see what I'm saying? They just listen to what they say, man. And they could be completely going way left field because you done got used to them and their influence and they got followed. And they way left field, man. You see? You got a lot of that going on, man. And that's just the way it is because you people got to get caught up, man. The Heavenly Father and His Son warned the people, the elect of the nation of Israel, what's to come, man. And if you're not of the elect, you're going to be taken with the left hand side and uh, led astray, man. That's what it's going to be. That's your destiny, man. Because the Heavenly Father and His Son don't want you. It's a hard pill to swallow, but that's what it is. They don't want you. Okay? Like you think in your bubble that you have created. Okay? Go ahead. This is uh, verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Oh man, there's rumors of wars everywhere, man. You got the you got the wars and over there in Ukraine, you got the wars over there with Israel, okay? You even got proxy wars that's not even in the news and not even mentioned, man. You see, you got wars in Africa, man. Okay? You got tension everywhere, man. But those are the signs of the end, man. And see, I can remember when uh, wasn't nobody even talking about uh, nuclear war. And when we were mentioning it, they would look at us like, oh, y'all people are crazy. Y'all, y'all, it's just going to be penguins everywhere. You know, there ain't going to be no inhabitants on Earth. It's just going to be penguins everywhere. You see? But now you got mainstream news talking about nuclear war. 
And we've been telling you, starting from the positive elder GMS on down, we've been telling you before they even start saying that. Right. But now you're ready to listen to them when they right. say it. Right, right. And we've been reading out the scripture telling you the plan of the heavenly father and his son, right? We've been telling you. But like I was saying last week, all right, you ain't got to pay attention to it. Keep doing what you're doing, living your life, uh, being a buffoon, you know, in the world, so the Most High can destroy you. <laughs> Be partying and living it up, spend all your money, max out your credit card, so the Most High can destroy you, because that's what it's going to be. This is your destiny to die in America, and wherever else you, you set up to die at. <laughs> it's funny to us. Keep chasing box. Yeah, keep the chasing that rotten box. <laughs> you know, yeast infection box. <laughs> keep chasing that. All right, I'm going let me let me let my boy Scott Ritter get down. You know. Maybe. Well, basically, the, the article expands on um, a New York Times um, reporting by David Sanger that the Biden administration in March of this year uh, signed off on what's known as the president's uh, nuclear employment. Hold on. Is my uh, volume up? Sorry about that. Review. It's a much more publicly uh, discussed document. Um, and the Biden administration published its uh, nuclear posture review uh, in 2022. Um, the nuclear employment guidance is generally only issued when there's been a change of significance in the nuclear posture review or in circumstances that requires uh, America to rethink its nuclear war planning. Uh, employment means how we use our nuclear weapons. Now, this is just guidance. Um, once this has been reported to Congress, um, the, the guidance is sent to the Secretary of Defense, who then puts forward the Secretary of Defense uh, nuclear employment guidance, which is the plan. He's telling the warfighters, this is how we will use our nuclear weapons um, when called upon to do so. Um, as you can imagine, this is an extraordinarily sensitive uh, document, according to the New York Times. Um, no electronic copies exist. There's only a handful of uh, hard copies, and they're very tightly controlled. Um, what's important about this is to, again, put it into context. Right now, the United States is capped to the number of nuclear weapons we can deploy by the New START Treaty. That's a bilateral treaty between the United States and Russia. The treaty was written when, uh, I mean, it was, you know, in 2010, the continuation of treaties that went back to 1991, the original START Treaty. Um, when the United States and, uh, and then the Soviet Union and later Russia had a near monopoly on um, strategic nuclear weapons uh, in, in, in the tens of thousands, we've since then reduced them. Um, I think the Russians have around 6,000 warheads in their arsenal. We have a little over 5,000, but the treaty says, you can only have 1,550 deployed warheads. Those, that is warheads that are ready to be used in a time of war. Um, so the nuclear employment guidance and the, new, and the nuclear employment plan that the United States has to go to war in nuclear weapons um, makes use of these deployed weapons. That means that each weapon doesn't exist just to exist. It exists because there's a target out there waiting for it to hit in time of war. Um, according to whatever scenario presents itself. That is the war plan. Right now, the vast majority of these weapons are earmarked for a war with Russia. Why? Well, because the primary purpose of these weapons is deterrence. And a key aspect of deterrence is that if Russia were to use nuclear weapons against us, we must convince the Russians that our retaliation would be so terrible that the consequences would far outweigh any perceived benefits Russia might get from using nuclear weapons, therefore the deterrence. So it's not just to say if you nuke us, we'll nuke you, but to actually have the real capability to strike back and bring harm. Um, we, of course, have reserved nuclear weapons for other contingencies. I mean, we can speculate on what those might be. An Iranian contingency where if we were, for instance, to take out the Firdos nuclear enrichment plant, uh, it's underground. Conventional bunker busters won't work. We'll probably need to use uh, one of the newly modified B-61 gravity bombs that'll come in or maybe something else. Um, North Korea, I'm sure, has a nuclear employment plan attached to it. So does China. Perhaps India. Uh, perhaps Pakistan.
Pakistan in the case of an emergency. Um, who knows? We might even have a war plan against Israel. Um, we plan for everything. But the, the number of warheads allocated to these contingencies previously has been minimal. Um, but what's happened since the Biden administration came into power is we've been provoking China um, over the issue of Taiwan, over the South China Sea. And as a result, we now have to consider the real possibility, some would even say probability, of a full-scale war with China. 